Good morning. Welcome to Village in Motion. Today is Monday, October 29th, 2018, and we're here on a sunny, sunny Monday morning with Dave Anderson. Thank you. And we're going to talk this morning about the Parkinson's support group here at Green Spring. Welcome. Thank you. How are yeah. you this morning? I'm pretty good, although like a friend of mine would say, if you're Italian, you wouldn't want to say you're half dead because that's a mezzo morte in Italian, and there's no way you can be half dead. You have to be either dead or not dead. Well, so I won't say mezzo morte, I'll say I'm here. Oh, well, Hello. I'm glad. <laughs> We're very glad you're here. Okay. <laughs> Sounds like a little Halloween humor there, right? Yeah. So you are the leader of our Parkinson's support group. Yes. How many people do we have in that group? We, we have a monthly gathering, and we, we draw between 20 and 30 people. Now, who comes to that group? Is it, it's not only people who have Parkinson's disease. Well, it's uh, caretakers as well as uh, and also, we occasionally get uh, older children of the person to attend, depending upon the subject matter, I think. It could be anybody who's interested yes, in the disease. Yes, and we don't, I've gotten calls from outside, and I don't say you can't come because you don't live at Green Spring. Mm -hmm. I feel it should be open, but we don't advertise outside. It's our situation, but I do let But anyone in. could come who yes, wished they could. to. Yeah. Be, now, what happens at your meetings? Well, we, we have... Uh, a speaker, that's primarily what we do, and that's the, uh, that's the part we call support. Mm -hmm. uh, we're trying to, to give an opportunity for people with Parkinson's to learn new things about the disease. And, and the big thing we feel is really important here is to allow people to understand what we have available to them. So many times, people have lived here for years and didn't know there was an opportunity say, to have something done that would have uh, relieved some of their symptoms. So is it, and I've been talking recently to um, some people with, with another disease who just kind of had somebody say, here's the, here's the diagnosis, mm -hmm. uh, kind of go in peace. Right. And, and without any more education about the disease than is possible. Yeah. And is the same thing true of Parkinson's? I think the problem with, with Parkinson's is that present time we don't have a cure right and we have some very good drugs that relieve some of the symptoms but there's no cure and we know we're going to be living with the disease probably as long as we live and until there's a cure so we feel that it's important to try and alleviate as many of those symptoms as we can and there's a lot of help out there yes and especially here in this a lot in metropolitan Green area yes and a lot in Green Spring. yes so give me some examples. Okay, well, we just had Helen Chung, a dietitian here at Green Spring, and she spoke on the Mediterranean diet, which is a lovely diet, and she's tailored some things with the Mediterranean diet just to Parkinson's. Inter now, what is the Mediterranean diet? Well, the Mediterranean diet is a diet that uses olive oil primarily as, as its uh, main substance, and uh, it's very good for everybody. And so she's taken it and kind of fashioned it for Parkinson's and she presented that whole program. And then she brought along another person that works here at Green Spring who is a, uh, a certified uh, speech pathologist. And she works on swallowing problems. Because we all kind of, one of the common things with Parkinson's, we generally all have a swallowing problem. And uh, her name is Ty. And mm -hmm. Ty presented some very good uh, aspects of how to increase your ability to, to swallow. And so that was a lovely program. Uh, we've had uh, Juanita come and talk about chair fitness. That's an exercise program that, that she's developed uh, for Parkinson's people that is very effective. You can do it at home. You don't have to stand and dance around. You sit in a chair and do your exercises. We've had Big and Loud, which is a physical therapy and a uh, it's for your speech voice. pathology. Yeah, I'm increase your, with that one. Increase your uh, speech and increase your, your ability to, to walk. So this goes on. So th it, and everything you're telling me is that someone living here at Green Spring has a whole lot, lot more support than someone living out in the community just going to see their doctor. Oh, I think so, certainly. Yes, and the point, your group is, is part of its 
good existence is to say, hey, did you know about this and bring someone in to speak exactly. on that subject. Yep. Yes. Now, the, the dietary part of it, I understand in, in some of the reading that I was doing, is that part of the, the digestive systems symptoms is constipation is a problem. Yes. So the Mediterranean diet helps with that. The problem with, with that, though, is like a, a lot of people have, <coughs> just don't drink enough fluid. And a lot of constipation is simply eliminated by, so to speak, just drinking by more water. drinking more water. Yes. I think that that's true of a lot of a lot of problems, various mm -hmm. health problems that we as, as elderly people have. Mm -hmm. It's just if we would drink more water, a lot of those problems would be eliminated, but sometimes right. vi other health problems with, well, it's going to be easier for me if I don't drink water, then I won't have to go to all the trouble of trying to get up and go to the bathroom, <laughs> et cetera, et cetera. Well, that's true. Yes. But we always have depends. That's true. That's why God invented depends. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> right, yes. But drinking more water helps a lot. <laughs> yes, it does. Okay. Uh, I think that, you know, there are certain things going on in your body with Parkinson's that contribute to constipation, but it's primarily, if you would follow the drinking of your water, you'd find that a lot of that's relieved. Good. That's, uh, that, that's true of a lot mm -hmm. of things. That's terrific. Yep. So you have a lot of good speakers that come. And, and are part of your meetings just sharing information with each other? That could be part of it. <laughs> One of the things we, we sort of have taken the angle of doing the uh, uh, helping people like we've talked about with with education and, and learning new things the outreach part is difficult because a lot of people don't want to talk or ask a question in a group they're shy they're embarrassed and it's very difficult we want to overcome that and I brought some some work we're doing to see if we can alleviate that and get more in the outreach area and, and outreach saying we know that people out there have questions yes tell us what your question exactly are. and it's it's for the people out there to ask that's the outreach they're you're, you're outreaching. talking about the people who aren't even coming to your group yes a lot okay so we know we have about 2,000 people here at yep. Green Spring and you have about how many people who come to your group between 20 and 30 and so how many people do you we don't know how many people no. at Green Spring have. with the laws that pertain to medical records, we can't go into medical records, their medical record and find out what their medical diagnoses are. But we know by statistical average, we know the average age and the, and the average sex of the pe persons that live here. And based on the national average, we have about 90, we figure, living here, just based on that statistic. So we very probably have some people hiding away in their apartments yes. thinking, oh, I don't want anybody to know I have this disease. I'll just stay here and hide away. Exactly. And what your goal is, is to pull them out. Well, that w that's the first goal, to pull them out and then get them active in doing something. Just to pull them out and get them to sit in a meeting, probably is just the beginning of, of the tip of the iceberg, but then will lead to something else. If we don't get them initially to a meeting, we can't do anything. And is it kind of like getting them to admit and to say out loud, hey, I have a problem, I'm here with other people who have the problem, and it's okay to talk about exactly. it. Exactly. Well, you can see, I, you know, I've taken my medication today, but I'm still moving around, and people would think, well, what's wrong with him? I don't really care. Good for you. you frank, Good frankly, for you. I don't care. I, I didn't get it as a result of being naughty. It's not a venereal <laughs> disease. It's not something probably I inherited. I was chatting with you earlier about... Um, does anybody in my family have a history of Parkinson's? As far as I know, they don't. Well, it's like so. anything else that goes wrong with our bodies. If we don't have any control over it. This is what the disease exactly. is doing. Yeah. Yes, we're seeing the disease right. move you around. Yep. Right. So it, it's kind of like I, I go to the hearing support group each oh. month. And, and it's, I'm, I guess, as a caregiver to my mother, who has is, is, since died, I started going to learn more about hearing support. Mm -hmm. And I just kept on going. But as far as, as going to the meetings, they have the same difficulty in having people, getting people to come to the meetings and admit that they have a hearing difficulty and in public situations say to people, I have a hearing problem. Mm -hmm. In the same way with your group, just getting people to get out and admit to other people that, hey, I have a problem here. Mm -hmm. I have some challenges I'm dealing with. 
Well, I'd like to kind of do a little shout out to a person who has really helped our group, and that is Marie Lee. Uh, from the, the hearing the, support the, group. <laughs> hearing support group. In fact, she was the one who got us to talk about uh, hearing. Can they see that? Let's put it up here. I'm going to hold it, it real was, still. It um, was hearing problems in Parkinson's. And there is an audiologist named Gina Cravado. Cravado, right. Comes here. And we were able to get her to speak to our group. And Marie helped us set that all up. Now, this is the relationship between Parkinson's disease and hearing loss. Yes. And this was Thursday, October 26th. Did you have a good turnout? We had a pretty good turnout for that one. Good. Yep. And what is the relationship? Now I'm curious. Um, don't know. <laughs> like a lot of things. Okay. But there is, there's, there's really no specific research that's been done on that, mm -hmm. I don't think, that I know of. There probably has been, but I, I don't know of it. Um, but certainly people that have Parkinson's have a higher percent of, of hearing, hearing loss. loss. We do know that. So there's another yes. something to get yes. people to talk about. So I, I have to say, Marie has helped on, on that issue. She also is helping, as well as she's doing in her group, to conquer this outreach thing, trying to get the people in the meetings and ask questions. So it's sort of the same thing. They're not as shy, I don't think, in, in hearing loss, but there is a certain but there's, element There of still that. is a lot of it. The mm -hmm. people, I was talking with a lady that I met here on campus just the other day, and and she, she said to me, I'm sorry, I can't hear you. And I said, well, do you have hearing aids? Oh, yes, I have hearing aids, but I only wear, th wear them in my apartment <laughs> to watch the news at night. And so I invited her to the hearing loss group, and it was the same kind of thing. Get yeah. out of your apartment, wear the hearing aids, talk to other people. Yeah. It, you need to get out yeah. and say, there are other people who can support yeah. you, other people who can ask questions, and that you can ask questions of. Well, that's true. And then to say something else, uh, there's a spinoff we were able to also make friends with her husband, John, and he's yes. gonna come this year and talk about safety. Oh, excellent idea. So he's gonna present a whole program on that, and we're looking forward to having John with us, so. And John's been really good on the he's safety been, committee been this year. Right. Yeah, Dave, you brought some posters up here. Sure. If we can Okay. Well, ask this, one of our camera people to focus on these posters. We'll see th when they come kinda, up on the screen. All right, we'll get the focus here. And the first one, what we're pointing out, is that your group is listed in the Community Resources Handbook. This is an older I have an, an older, older copy, here, probably. But you are listed in the new mm -hmm. one, and you're also listed in the resident group section on the Village Bridge. Good. Okay, well, let's turn this okay. over. These are the three, these are all works in, in uh, action, I should say. These are the three remaining programs we have left for 2018. On November 8th, we have Juanita, who's one of our WellDesk coordinators. She's going to talk about the chair fit exercise. So this is, is on November 8th. Yeah, it's going to be over here at Town Center. In the classroom. Uh -huh. So you can come? Yes, that's a, a flyer will be put out on this, and it's going to be excellent. Juanita is a, is a good teacher. 1.30 to 2.30 in the town center classroom and this is chair fit exercise. Yes. Anyone can come to Anybody. this. Anybody. We Excellent. love it. And then the second thing we're going to have uh, remaining this year is a new program that um, a lady by the name of, um, I have her name up there. What? No. Debbie. Debbie has set up an aqua aerobics program and she's going to have anybody who's interested, primarily we're going to advertise to the Parkinson's people, to come poolside on December 13th from 12.30 to 1.30, and she's going to demonstrate the aqua aerobics and have people sign up, even go in the water that day if they want, and to get started. On, that's going to be an excellent program. Good. We're really looking forward to that. And I'll just celebrate a little bit, and we're going to have a party on the 27th of December. Uh, there's no, uh, none of our people have to cook or it's not a potluck. We have a little kitty that we set up oh. <laughs> and you feed the kitty. There you go. Feed the kitty and the kitty will produce this party. We're going to have a good time on the 27th. Again, anybody, that'll be over at Town Center classroom. 
And that would be a good way to come and meet That'd some other good. people. That's a good, excellent way to meet new people. So let me ask you about exercise mm -hmm. and Parkinson's. That helps keep you moving. Yes. Not a cure. No. But it does help keep you moving. Yes. Is Parkinson's like some other diseases where the um, temptation for some people is just to sit? Is, I mean. Um, I'm thinking of my mother who decided at some point in her life that okay, I don't feel good, so the cure is going to be that I'm just going to sit. Oh, yes, that's true. And in fact, also some things, I, maybe we should flip this okay. slide here. I think I have a picture of it. I'll go back. To, yeah, I'll, we'll come back to that page. Okay. Here's an example of what you're talking about. This is really a program we tried to start here at uh, Green Spring. Uh, uh, Boxing course. I'm, trying, I'm actually, trying to imagine my mother boxing. Let's yeah. see. Well, <laughs> that's the thing. It's probably more uh, for the younger population mm -hmm. of Parkinson's because most of the older people, like myself, have already problems where you you fall, and part of the boxing is moving on your feet mm -hmm. as well as coordinating your punching into a bag. So, it, so far, it has been very successful in getting it started here because I think our population just doesn't because support it. Because part of the difficulty for you is balance, is yes. that correct? Yes, yes, but it's a wonderful thing for the younger group. Mm -hmm. So we don't know how we can do it, um, but we're, we're going to work on it again this coming year. We're not going to give up. Of course, there would be a possibility of doing boxing while you're sitting also. Would that could be, be something you could do We have to chair? adapt it, like yeah. we've done to a lot of things, adapt it to our group. Sure. But if you could go back to the first page, I'll show you some of the things that uh, we've had come up in the past. We had a great turnout for this session here. That was... Uh, this is where do I go for mental health advice? Exactly. And at the time, we had a lady here by the name of uh, Mercedes, was it? No, I don't I've crossed the names up. Yeah. And she's retired, but... Uh, uh, Kathy, um, I'm blanking on her name right now. Kathleen Taylor. Taylor. Kathleen Taylor bans that desk now. Mm -hmm. and, and there's a phone number in the phone book where you can call her. She's and there. Get a She's referral. in the medical center right, now. Right, exactly. And so she came to speak, and uh, that was an excellent program. And she'll come back again and do that again. And we had a lovely get together with two neurologists. Dr. Falconer and Dr. Uh, Rogers both see a number of, of people who live here in Green Spring. And they came out, both of them came out and spent over an hour and a half in front of our group. That's wonderful. Answering questions till the last question. Now that to me is outreach. That's great. That's outreach. That's terrific. Right. And then we had uh, a drug company come and present an aspect of a drug that's already used quite frequently. Uh, the L-DOPA drugs, and this is now given uh, like you do for insulin uh, with diabetes. You wear a, uh, oh, like a pump. A pump, Interesting. exactly. You get the drug pumped into you below your stomach, mm -hmm. into your small intestine, and so you avoid all of that danger of the drug not reaching uh, where it's supposed to go. So probably won't have have this repeated, but. This is the kind of thing we like to see. We're not trying to promote but, any but drug. It's, it tells you what's new. Exactly. And maybe if your doctor hasn't heard about it. Yep. You, for, I, and for instance, I have migraine headaches, and I, mm -hmm. I've started some new medicines. But I've been telling friends about this drug, and their doctor hadn't yet told them about it. So it's just kind of like sharing the news. Exactly. And we were so lucky because Dr. Pagan is an excellent speaker. And he not only talked about this L-DOPA drug, but he talked about other research that's mm -hmm. going on. Good. So we'd like to repeat sim something similar like that this coming year. Now this is, a <laughs> this is a little interesting. And my wife said, "Are oh, you going to put that, flower? I thought you threw that away." I actually said when we pass this out, if anybody can figure out what I'm talking about here, I'll give them a prize. I didn't get any answers. You have an answer to what I don't. It, might it be? looks like a chair. No, that's a that's a waffle iron. It's a waffle iron. Okay, I don't okay. have a clue. Well, I went to school at University of Oregon, and one of the persons who went there also was a fellow by the name of Phil Knight. 
and Phil Knight is a is the founder of Nike. Okay. And he went to as a student. He didn't like the track shoes, and he had an idea of if we could improve the tr friction or whatever. I didn't run track myself, but if you can get a better uh, better way to run on the track, mm -hmm. you would really improve times and everything like that. But he needed a waffle iron. Ah. So the coach said, well, I'll, I'll smuggle ours out of the house. So <laughs> I'm he, sure his wife appreciated right, that. Right, <laughs> so he brought it to the, to the university, and Phil had the, the polyurethane rubber, I guess, he poured it on the waffle iron, and they cooked it, and they made enough so that Phil could cut an outline of his running shoes and then glue them onto the bottom. So he had a, this new waffle iron design on the bottom of his shoes. He went out and tried it, and it worked like gangbusters. So the point of this program was the research continues. Exactly. And it's basic science research. Phil Knight, owner and person who's developed Nike, just contributed a half a billion dollars, a half a billion wow. to the University of Oregon for basic science research. Wonderful. It's going to employ 850 some employees, They're going to build a huge new building. That's great. So this is what comes out of basic science. Right. So you were talking, you were telling me earlier about, we were talking about Michael J. Fox and mm -hmm. how much, he's raised what, a, almost a billion dollars for Parkinson's oh, yeah. research. Yeah. Uh, Michael J. is an example of somebody who acquired the symptoms of Parkinson's very early and very severely. He's had... Uh, and that's unusual for someone yes. that young. Yes. And he's had deep brain stimulation, which was used quite frequently. It's used less frequently now because we have some better, it's quite, once you you touch the brain with an electronic device, you've made a permanent scar, so to yes. speak. So you really want to be careful in that regard. But he was one of the early people to go on that deep brain stimulation. And it's probably kept him, although he moves around a lot, still it's kept him as well as he has. And he has raised not only four children, kept his marriage intact, but he's become a very successful oh, yes. uh, business person and, and contributed all his money to yeah. research. Well, one thing that I wanted to mention is that as I read in the many, many, many different symptoms of mm -hmm. Parkinson's, I think it would be very easy for someone to think, oh, well, I have this and I have that and I have this and I have that. Maybe I have Parkinson's. Mm -hmm. And I have a friend, a very close friend, who had some tremors in one hand mm -hmm. and went to a doctor and the doctor just said, oh, that must be Parkinson's. Here's some, here's some pills, take these. And this poor lady went for two years thinking that she had Parkinson's. The doctor never did anything mm -hmm. more for her. There was no more, nothing. And finally she went to another doctor thinking, mm -hmm. you know, there's, I want a little more help here. That was not the problem at all. So it's, it, Sometimes you may think that you have a specific disease looking at just one symptom, yeah. and you really need to make sure that, that you're getting the proper care, whether it's Parkinson's or whether it's something else. Well, it'd be nice if there were a simple test, a blood test or some kind of uh, scrape some skin test that right. for genetics. There isn't. But there's not. There's not anything specific. So the doctor is watching you, your symptoms, tracking what you do, and making that diagnosis. And this doctor, for her, looked only at one symptom. Right. I would guess diagnosed. that, I'm only guessing here, I would guess that the doctor is probably not a neurologist. No, it was and not. not only not a neurologist, but like we, I was saying here, we had Dr. Rogers and Dr. Faulkner come here. They're both uh, movement disorder neurologists. Right. De neurologists within that field have many different specialties, yeah. correct? Exactly. And they not only can pinpoint what the depth of your Parkinson's is, but they can tell you a whole lot of other things about you just from the way you move and you talk. Right. So we're lucky to have people like that. Well, again, in this urban area. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, that's another thing that I think your group can do if, if people are coming here and and maybe looking for a different doctor, maybe they've come from out of state moving here and can, can come to the group and say, hey, I've come from out of state, can mm -hmm. someone suggest a good doctor? 
Yeah. That's, that's another good. advantage to having a support yep. group. Yep. And I'd like to get into that a little bit here. I Certainly. think I have. Uh, did we get into this? Oh, yeah. Well, we we're going to. These are some other things we're having. Big and loud. We talked about our annual dinner. Mm -hmm. and that celebrates Dr. Parkinson's um, naming the disease, shaking, um, shaking palsy. What did he call it exactly there? It's right up. Uh, um. Paralysis agitans. Yeah. <laughs> right. As in what a good, agitated. Right. What a good title. Yeah. yeah. So anyway, these are some more flyers. Mm -hmm. And in terms of outreach, we tried to do this with our with our program, um, okay. and it wasn't very successful. First, I left out phone numbers, and this was just a pretty much a weak attempt at giving the people who came to our meetings a flyer on who they could call in our group with a phone number. But unfortunately, my first attempt left the phone numbers <laughs> up. So we're gonna try again. Good idea. Yeah, I think that's a good idea. Let's see what else we got in here. Okay. Okay. Um, I've come up with a, with a way in our group that maybe we can capture some of these questions without people having to put themselves out. So I've come up with this form. Again, it's still uh, in development, but this would be given to you on your own time, you know, giving you some possible topics. These are just off of the top of my head, quality of life, driving, memory. But put your own topics, what you'd like to talk about, and turn it in. And then the committee will look at all these, hopefully, piles of input, and we'll come up with specific areas mm -hmm. that we can uh, look into, and we'll have a meeting just to talk about, let's say, memory. And we'll have guest speakers or, or guests who are experts in that area to answer those questions. Yeah, good idea. That's what I call outreach. And, and one thing that, that I have used in, a, in educational situations when, when people don't feel comfortable maybe verbalizing their question is ask people ahead of time to put their questions on a three by five card and hand it in anonymously. Mm -hmm. And then the question is there and can be answered. Uh, how much time do we have? We have, I, I can give you one minute, Dave. Okay. They're telling me we have two, and I need well, one for. Okay, I'd quickly like to acknowledge the other people on my committee. Oh, certainly. That work so idea. hard. I, I have Bob Richard, who is a retired university professor, University of Maryland, I believe. I have Connie and Jack Nelson. Uh, Connie was very active until, unfortunately, her Parkinson's has worsened. And, she has a hard time participating now, but they're very loyal, and, and uh, Jack has helped us primarily with setting up our audiovisual stuff. Oh, great. He's an audiovisual guy. And then I have um, an exceptionally brilliant person, I think, Benny Bao. And Benny is a retired Navy captain. He was also the uh, head of the uh, Toastmasters International. Oh, terrific. And he's written a book called 101 Ways to Improve Your Communication Skills. So uh, if you want to contact me, I'll tell you how to buy Benny's book. There you <laughs> go. Sounds like himself. That's a good book. Yeah. I have uh, Alma Noble, who, who's still very, well, is, tries to be as active as she can. Again, her Parkinson's symptoms have increased. A.J. Kearney and Alois Turk. She worked on boxing. So that's my hardworking committee. Well, you have a good committee there. That's yeah, terrific. We have a great, great group of people. Good group. So I'm very proud Wonderful. of it. I'm happy to, to be a part of it. Well, I'm just so glad you came and joined us this Thank morning. You. And you have a wonderful committee with a great program. And we will encourage people to, to keep an eye out for okay. flyers for your next. When is your next meeting? It will be the 9th of November with Juanita. 9th of November, so yes. if you have an interest in Parkinson's, if you have Parkinson's, if you know someone with Parkinson's and would like to learn more, please join we'll have a flyer out. 9th of November, and where will it be? It's gonna be uh, over here at, uh, in a classroom, right? In Village Square? In Village Square. At what time? It'll be at 12.30. 12.30. Oh no, 1.30, I'm sorry, 1.30 1 to 2.30. 1.30 right. to 2.30, 9 November, yes. Village Square Classroom. Sounds like an interesting program, Great. Thank I'm sure. you. Thank you for coming.